I w oh, wow, thank you. I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> it's only downhill from here if I get a applause. <laughs> on. Uh, we're going to start today with some soul searching, all right? If it's closing your eyes helps, you can do that. But I want you to think down and think very honestly with your company and ask yourself, where do you put more of your energy behind? Is it driver recruiting or is it driver retention? So just think about the, not, not the dollar cents, what do we measure, what's the energy behind? Does anyone put more energy behind retention than they do recruiting? Should we? Uh, The company overall. And by the way, if you think so, great. But here's the trick, is that it's all intertwined. It's, a big trick. it's all the same thing. <laughs> it's all intertwined. So especially as, a, especially as it stands today. So think about your, your digital reputation. If you're a prospective driver and you're figuring out where I'm going to work this day, or if I was even thinking about it, uh, and I come to your site, I see a pool of transportation, I see one star on Indeed, or I see one star on Facebook or Google, do I even pick up the phone to talk to you? Probably not. And if I was a recruiter had found me, and I'm doing research to figure out what's going on in your world, you just put that recruiter on an uphill battle that they're going to have to try to combat. Why does this company have all these negative reviews going online? <coughs> in the olden days, right, you used to measure your reputation based on referrals. Would Bob tell Joe that you're a good place to work? And if you, if you wrong Bob, eh, kind of put him in the corner and hope he doesn't really show his head up, but it wasn't as loud as it is today, right, with, our online, uh, with your online reputation. So when I say it's all, when I'm talking about reinvention, this is what I'm talking about is that, yep, you still need to advertise, yep, you still need to do targeted, you know, uh, social media advertising, you need to find the right people, but don't waste your time and energy until you've got the infrastructure down right so you're not making your recruiters swim upstream. So that's what we're going to jump into today. So we organize it into eight processes that you can focus on. If anyone's interested, we got, I'll put up a sign here to download an ebook that's 75 retention strategies. We organize them in these eight buckets. It's got more detail than what I'm going to talk about today. Today, just kind of think about overall, what are maybe the two or three things I could take back that with limited effort is going to produce the biggest results, right? That's kind of how you prioritize what you should do. So we got more detail, more how-tos. So today is going to be more the overview as you start to hone in what, you know, where you should start. Uh, and this is where you should start, is a declaration. And so it needs to come from the top. It needs to come from the big dog that's going to say, we're serious about retention. We're going to put in place pieces and parts to help improve our retention. But it's got to come from the top that says, we're going to do this. If you think about back in 1776, how did we start our country? Those guys in tights said, you know what? We're no longer going to be a colony. We're going to be a country. We're declaring our independence. Now, there's a whole war that happened right, as a part of that declaration. But it started with the declaration. And so just like that, you need to start your war on driver turnover. And so if you're feeling really frisky and you want to put your money where your mouth is, love, love tying all the executive bonus pool, as many people at the top as you want, tying it to retention. It's a good way to get people to focus on it and stay focused on it all year round and not become the flavor of the month. The other way to avoid becoming the flavor of the month is that constant, consistent, where, where, where are we at? What are the numbers saying? What are we doing each week? And we're looking at this number each week on driver retention. So the louder we're bringing that drum, the more visual it is, the more people, you know, your frontline supervisors who impact this are going to recognize, oh, they're serious about this. This isn't going to go, if I, if I just ignore this for another month longer, it'll go away, right? They can't just show them that, eh, well, we're going to keep coming back to this. So when I say it starts with a declaration, you've already got a company culture. You may be intentional about defining it, or it might just kind of happen, but you've got a culture. So you might as well be intentional about it and steer it and influence in the direction that you want. So I mentioned some of the recruiting pieces, right, about your online presence. Um, talking specifically about, though, changing your approach to how you recruit. So if I were to say, you know, Candy, where are you recruiting? I think you're still doing some Randall Riley stuff, right? You're on Indeed, the kind of the usual suspects. No, we've changed all that. OK, we're <laughs> good. Well, maybe you're ahead of the game. You're doing what we're about to describe. The point is on those jobs boards, those are people looking for jobs. If you're hanging out on all the other social media platforms, you're looking for passive candidates. The difference between passive and active is passive doesn't, wasn't thinking about looking to apply until you interrupted their scroll. You know, as they're looking at cat videos or grandma's videos or whatever it is. Come on in. And so when you're, when you're looking at a passive candidate, 
again, they weren't thinking about applying until they saw your ad and said, huh, that might be intriguing. And so when someone's seeking you out, we call that an inbound lead versus an outbound lead, they're more likely to, one, you're gonna have to spend less time and energy recruiting them. Two, they were seeking you out. They're more likely to stick around because they liked what you had to offer. Right, so it's hard to think about passive, inbound, outbound, passive versus you going after gathering them. Another piece of the puzzle from my recruiting days of that I used to track cost of uh, lead, cost of application, cost of hire by the source. And as I've been reflecting on that, it was only half of the puzzle. It was important. You want to spend your money at the lowest cost per hire, but it wasn't taking into account the tenure with the organization. And so there's a couple ways to calculate it. Um, just kind of overall think about what's the revenue that driver brings subtracted by the cost of acquisition of that driver and track that by source. And so if you're just looking at cost per hire, you're just saying, well, I'm just going to throw my money where it's going to be a grand, two grand, you know, in order to acquire someone. Um, where this is thinking about the longer picture. How, what's the impact they're having on your company? So think about, you know, you might spend a little few more bucks if you know they're going to stick around for two years versus 90 days. So start to track the tenure by source. And if nothing else, think about it that way, tenure by source. So now, once you've got, you're wooing them, they're interested, you're in the dating process, you're getting them excited. A lot of time when we're doing screening today, we look at a motor vehicle report, the PSP, the background check. Those are all good things. We're looking, trying to look at past behavior in order to predict future behavior. But it's only half of the story. You know, if I were to ask you and say, can you think about some of your best drivers? And we had, there was one on stage, Barb. If we say, what makes Barb such a great driver? What are some of the characteristics you'd say? Go ahead, play along. Uh-huh. Uh, she uh, cares about him and her family. She was raised by her father, who's a trucker. Uh, she is safety focused. There you go. I bet she's friendly. Yep. You love her, love putting her in front of customers. But dispatch loves working with her. Some days. Some days. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. But if you notice, none of those things we just described there, you can't find that in MVR. You can't find that in a PSP, right? And so when you're evaluating people, there's different tools out there to use. Pre-hire behavioral assessments, structure interviews, they get into what we say, the stuff that you can't change versus the stuff that you can change. So Jeff and I were talking about earlier today, you'd rather hire someone out of school because they don't have 30 years of bad experiences. Over here is what we call the old dog, right? <laughs> we can't teach them new tricks. Over here, we can still teach, we could teach young horse over here, we could teach him how to drive a truck. You know, with, with time, energy, money, it's going to cost about double, triple the cost, by the way, of a, someone that has experience, but you can do it. And you'd much rather hang out with him if he's got the right values, motivation, personality, because he's there, eager to learn, and you can mold him. So hire for what you can't change, train for what you can. Think about it as a general approach. Whether you're going to schools or not, it doesn't matter. But think about how you evaluate people, getting into who they are. So to your point, you said safety focus. The other term for that would be, you know, as, as well as risk aversion. So someone like me, who likes to jump out of airplanes, is not a good truck driver because I have a high risk tolerance. You don't want me behind the wheel. So, but someone who likes that routine, who likes safety, right, they va that's part of who they are. You want to hire me for you to be a truck driver for a lot of reasons. So now as we go back to that culture piece, now how do you keep that, especially in trucking, is a challenge. You get them on board, we're all excited, you give them the wet hug and the wet kiss, and you, send them, you give them the keys and you send them on the road and you barely see them again. So how do you keep them aligned with your culture? So first things first is setting expectations. A great tool, it's super simple, Here's, this costs you nothing but a Word doc, is a culture contract. One page document says here's our values, here's what we expect out of you, here's what you can expect out of us. Driver manager signs it, the driver signs it. Simple one page document that makes it really clear so when Horace is being a you know what, that we can come back to him and say, Horace, we agreed, these are our values, right? It's some of that soft, it's easy to say when someone's got an accident, you say you got to go. But some of that softer stuff is a little tough, to, a little, can be a little squishy. And, but you don't necessarily want to fire them, but you do want to correct the behavior. And so this tool says, hey, Horace, we agreed to this. You know, you, we, you and I signed that. On the other side of the fence, that also gives the driver, it's a tool for the driver to bring to you, or your dispatcher, to say, hey, what the heck, we, we agreed upon this. What's going on, you know? Um, and for those drivers that may not be willing to speak up, because we know there's some drivers will, some drivers won't. And why is turnover so high in the first 90 days? Well, all those unasked questions, uh, all those stupid questions that they didn't bring up, uh, that's because they didn't really feel they had the opportunity or, or ability to do so. 
So this document can help. It's a, doc it's a conflict resolution tool called Triangulation. We're sitting on the same side of the fence looking at this document. How can we, how, there's a problem. How can we work together to fix it? So we're addressing, we're providing a tool in order to, to overcome that conflict. Um, and same thing with the mentorship program. If maybe the driver doesn't feel comfortable talking about Horace, who's a you-know-what dispatcher, that with a peer, they might be able to have that conversation. So you might bet me in this room, maybe give a cell phone number out of one of the seasoned vets out there to help them along the way. Some of the best mentorship programs that we've seen out there will give uh, that mentor a couple extra bucks based on the, the tenure of that driver. So whatever your magical numbers are, 90 days, 180, a year, have it you know, scale up. Hey, they're, they're taking time out of their day. They don't have to do that. It'll be the best 250 bucks that you spend you know, in the course of that year just for those simple questions. So does anyone, does anyone in the room have a driver's council? So buddy of ours, Brian Feiklo, he's a, he runs Jetco Delivery down in Houston. And we were having a dinner a couple years ago, and he says, you know, we were talking about this stuff. This is what I do. And he says, you know, you, we realized one day we have a driver's council. We just didn't formalize it. And so they held elections, and they had zero surprises about who was elected on their driver's council. And then of that council, they had an election of who was going to be the president. And there were zero surprises of who won that, that, that council, you know, who was the president. And they gave that, that person a literal seat at the table. So when they have board meetings and they're planning on what lanes we're going after, where the customers, where the trucks were going to buy, there was a little seat, you know, literal, they would invite him to the table you know, for those conversations. And the point was, we already had a driver's council. It's either working against us or working for us. We might as well bring him into the loop and make this guy, Bob, make him part of the mouthpiece, make him part of it so that when someone's complaining, well, why don't we buy these trucks again? Or why are we going after this business? Well, hey guys, you know, I was part of it and here's the deal. That guy's, he's already a leader. You might as well make him a part of your team. So I'm sure a lot of folks do little things in this room, and I'm just going to more so tell a few stories and frame how you approach this. So if you think about it, does anyone have a note that a boss gave them or a loved one gave them, you know, that's five or ten years old on a little scribbled piece of paper that can't touch it because it might fall apart because it's been in the drawer for so long? You know, why do we hold on to that stuff? Because someone took the time it took 10 minutes to write something down, but it, it just it hit you at the right moment. And so, for whatever reason, and that person did it, didn't know that was the one that was going to make it in the drawer at the time, right? But you never know. So as you think about those, you know, what worked for you, here's a couple stories. So uh, Central Oregon Transport, they do a lot of things for the spouses. So they'll do dry cleaning, they'll do uh, grocery runs, they'll clean the cars while the guys are on the road. Um, but again, think about that. If someone does something for you, great. If you do something for your spouse or that person's kids, even better. Um, here's one, it's, it's almost dastardly good of providing scholarship funds for the children and they vest over time. So one, that's not that much money to toss in the pool every month and as a driver goes, oh man, they're really looking out for my family, for my kids. Are you going to leave? Where else are you going to get a scholarship fund for your children to go where they want to go? So you get creative and it doesn't cost that much and again, kind of those, those golden handcuffs um, are great tools. But again, it's what's really important about that, it's not so much the handcuffs, it's you're looking out for their kids. And that's the next level. So as you think about the little thing, there's a thousand ideas, but think about that. Look for their spouses, look for their kids. So everyone's, you know, here's the quick solution, right? Well, how do, we fix, uh, how do we fix the dryer pump? Pay them more. Well, that's obviously it's more complicated than that, right? And so I only, you know, I'm not going to start to pretend like I know y'all's businesses and I can understand, uh, you know, the rates and how they line up with the customers. I just got one story that you just need to think about as you think about your pay structure. That I was in, a, I was in the uh, lobby of a client waiting for a meeting. Don't worry, Jeff, it wasn't you. And I'm talking with the driver who's just sitting there, and he's looking at his pay settlement. I go, what's, what's going on? He says, I don't know how, but they're screwing me. I know they're screwing me. <laughs> I said, well, why do you think that? And he was trying to figure it out, and I'm taking a look at it. You need a PhD to, to decipher this thing. And so the basic point is perception is reality. If they can't figure it out, the first assumption is they're screwing me. So as you think about your pay packet, yep, it's great to get creative. Just make sure it's simple, please, because it has an impact on them. All right. So a lot of this ties into what Evan described. This is the, the partnership that we've created with OTA. Um, if you feel like your drivers, when they get a call from the safety department, it's a, uh, ugh. There's Bob again, you know. That's a missed opportunity. 
Um, we really think that the way we've designed our curriculum is that we turn it intentionally into a career path, right? Not just the principal's office. So what we're doing on October 15th, love to have you as part of OTA. It's the first ever event in their office. Although according to pictures, Thomas is gonna be ready. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so anyone takes bets with me, I say, I say no way. I think we're gonna be at the Hilton. <laughs> so what we're doing on the 15th is we're hosting a Triple C instructor <laughs> certification. The way this curriculum is designed is, you know, those, those dang operation folks, they won't let us get the safety people out of the, out of the office, or get the drivers or the trainers out of the office, you know, for months at a time to do in-depth studies on behavioral learning, science, defensive driving. So what we've done is we've created an online program, so it's about eight years worth of content before they show up, and we recap it in a full day workshop. So the first day is classroom, excuse me, the morning is classroom, the afternoon is behind the wheel, commentary driving. So triple C stands for look ahead, look around, leave room, communicate. We bake that into our, what we teach, the principles, the commentary driving. I'm looking ahead 15 seconds, establishing a safe falling distance. I'm counting off as I leave room. One, two, three, four, okay. We're sa so it, it bakes into the only way we know what's going on in the driver's noodle is what they're saying out loud. So we teach them how to teach here and teach them our defensive driving concepts. Now they can go back to your shop on the driver certification piece and your whole fleet should be a certified driver. Same concept, online training, but this time it's an hour, work, hour classroom, hour behind the wheel, making sure they understand the concepts. And the point is, you're all of your, everyone that you hire should be looking up going, hey, I, if I put some time in, some extra hours in, I can become a certified driver. And we've got the pins, the patches, you know, the shirt. And those drivers with those shirts, you know, for, I don't know, for 25 bucks, they're walking around the shop, you know, like they own the place. And everyone's saying, well, how, how would it be cool like Jeff? I, wanna, I want one of those shirts. Well, hey, you gotta work for it, right? And so, it's the same shirt, that's the uniform, right? And then, so whether, if you're going to schools or not, just as a, con, you know, we have a, a curriculum that allows you to turn a newbie into a seasoned pro. Again, executed by one of the Triple C certified instructors. Final piece of the puzzle. <laughs> is that program, like the training trainer program, is that carried? Like after a student graduates from school? Correct, the target audience is for newbies, just okay. recent grads. Okay. Yep. So, if we're going here, we're spending 10, 15 grand a pop in order to get, turn a newbie into a driver. If you guys will admit it, a new hire is going to be five grand pretty quick and probably a little bit more. Friends in Tanker. Um, so we invest a lot of time and energy, right? We should probably keep them. So we've created a series of leadership development courses for transportation professionals. So that's the thing about is the soft skills, you know, uh, time management, setting expectations, or the culture contract we talked about, uh, leadership principles. So those soft skills of how do we keep them as well as we've seen it being used as, Bob over here says, you know, I'm getting kind of old, I'm tired of being in the truck. Well, how won't you go through our 23 courses and when we have an opening we can talk about it. That way you don't always have office openings, right? So this can give you a place, kind of a bullpen, and say, well, hey, if you're really serious about it, you know, here's some self-directed learning you can put them through. So that's kind of think about this as a ladder. Because what exists today, I assume, is, hey, just stick around a few more years and we'll give you a few more cents per mile. Not exactly uh, something that gets me going. So, we've talked a lot about dispatch today, and the reason why is they make a thousand decisions a minute. They're the ones that touch the drivers the most. And so, we love, as you can tell here, we love tying compensation to retention because it grabs their attention. 5% of their bonus, whatever it is, something modest, just enough to grab their attention. All of a sudden, you'll see, dispatch, you know, you'll see that office start to get religion real quick uh, and make it a priority. That's why the same thing we say, put it at the top. If you, want, if you really want it to make it a priority, Make it a priority. The, I talked about monthly one-to-ones, you know, going back to that culture contract so you don't just sign in and it collects dust. Use that as a tool. Whether it's monthly, quarterly, again, do it on FaceTime, do it on Skype, whatever you got, whatever tool you got. And then, as I talked about, take the time to invest them. And when's, have you think of, have you actually invested in your dispatchers? So set them up for success. If you're gonna expect more out of them, give them the tools and give them the education in order to actually execute this plan. We can't just say, we want driver retention, ready to go. If they knew, they probably would have done it by now. So, a um, couple things as a recap. If you want to dive deeper into anything ran through today, uh, go to this site here. You can download both these materials. Um, we've got some, some brochures over there for the event on October 15th. If you think about the right people to send, 
if, it's, if your safety director is going, it's more so from a get educated on the concept so they can you know, start to preach, look ahead, look around, leave room, communicate. The people who are going to use it the most are your, your existing driver trainers. You know, who's a driver today that interacts with drivers? Um, you know, that's the right person to send to, you know, to the event in Columbus on, on the 15th. So if you want more detail, there's a couple handouts over there you can grab on the way out. No, but we could come, but we come to you. So this event is hosted, this one is we're doing in conjunction with OTA. This is part of our partnership. This is a revenue generator for OTA, so we're going to do it in Columbus. But, um, you know, if that doesn't work for you, that date, if you're still interested into it, we can come to your office. Sometimes that's easier for the drivers because they, um, they, got, they have lives. They're trying to drive a truck and make some money. So that's all I got today. I want to bore you all. Is that, have you guys, anyone got any questions in the room? Thank you. Appreciate it. Made it interactive.